In worked example 9.7, you're asked to use your knowledge of complex reactions to show whether the proposed mechanism for a reaction is compatible with the observed kinetics. The overall reaction is shown here. Nitrogen monoxide reacts with oxygen to form the brown gas nitrogen dioxide. Kinetic experiments show that the reaction is second order with respect to NO and first order with respect to oxygen. Note that the equation involves three molecules of reactants, so it must be a complex reaction. The proposed mechanism is made up of two elementary reactions and involves a short-lived intermediate N2O2. The first reaction is a pre-equilibrium and the rate constants K1 and K-1 refer to the forward and back reactions respectively. The N2O2 then reacts with oxygen in the second step and the rate constant for this process is K2. To test whether the mechanism is plausible, you need to work out an expression for the overall rate equation that follows from the mechanism and compare it with the one found experimentally. Let's work through the four steps in the strategy. The first step is to use the experimental information to write a rate equation. You're told the reaction is second order with respect to NO, first order with respect to oxygen, and K is the overall rate constant for the reaction. You're also told that the intermediate N2O2 is short-lived. This means you can apply the steady-state approximation to find an expression for its concentration in step 2. The steady-state approximation states that the rate of change of the concentration of a highly reactive species in a series of consecutive reactions is approximately zero. That is, the N2O2 gets used up as fast as it's formed, so its concentration stays constant. It reaches a steady state. So here's the steady state approximation for N2O2. The rate of change of its concentration equals the rate of its formation minus the rate of its consumption. These two rates are equal, so this equals zero. Let's put in values for these two rates. There's just one reaction in the mechanism that produces N2O2, and that's the forward reaction in the pre-equilibrium. The rate of that process is K1 times the concentration of NO squared. Now the rate of consumption. And there are two processes in the mechanism that consume N2O2. The back reaction in the equilibrium and the rate of that process is K minus 1 times the concentration of N2O2. And the second step where N2O2 reacts with oxygen and the rate of that process is K2 times the concentration of N2O2 times the concentration of oxygen. So this is the rate of consumption of N2O2. These two rates are equal. You can rearrange the equation and get an expression for the concentration of N2O2 in terms of the concentrations of NO and O2. Now let's look at step 3. Here is the proposed mechanism. And this is the expression for the concentration of N2O2 obtained in step 2. In step 3, you derive a rate equation that follows from the proposed mechanism. To do this, you need to remember the general expression for the rate of a reaction, equation 9.4 on page 386. This 
is the rate of the reaction in terms of the consumption of the reactants A and B. Note the minus signs because the concentrations are decreasing. This is the rate of reaction in terms of the formation of the products P and Q. Applying this to the reactions in the mechanism, this is the rate of reaction in terms of the consumption of the reactant NO and in terms of the formation of the product NO2. The rate of formation of NO2 in the second step is given by K2 times the concentration of N2O2 times the concentration of oxygen. So the rate of formation NO2 is given by this rate equation. However, it's not possible to measure the concentration of the intermediate N2O2. But you have an expression for its concentration here in terms of the concentrations of NO and oxygen. So you can substitute this term in red for the concentration of N2O2 which gives equation 9.19, which is the rate equation for the overall reaction in terms of measurable concentrations. The trouble is, it doesn't fit the observed kinetics, which show the reaction is second order with respect to NO and first order with respect to oxygen. Now let's go back to the full worked example. Here is the experimentally determined rate equation and this is the rate equation we derive from the mechanism in step 3. In step 4 you need to think about the relative magnitudes of the rate constants for the individual steps and decide which reaction is the rate determining step and so governs the overall kinetics. Suppose the second step is the slow rate determining step preceded by a fast pre-equilibrium. Then looking at the bottom line of this expression, suppose k minus 1 were very much greater than k2 times the concentration of oxygen. This would mean that this term here becomes insignificant compared to k minus 1. And the rate equation would take this form, which is now consistent with the observed kinetics, second order in NO, first order in oxygen. This term is constant and equivalent to k, the overall rate constant, for the reaction. This would be the case if the second step in the mechanism is sufficiently slow that it doesn't disturb the pre-equilibrium between NO and N2O2. Finally, note that this doesn't prove the mechanism is correct, merely that the mechanism is consistent with the observed kinetics.